Aloy, change your mind about that brew? No one wants to play strike. No? Anyone? Come for that beer after all, eh? Here, sit down. Get a pint in her hand. Wasn't expecting you to swing by. Since when do I do what's expected? Ha! There's that spark. Fire and spit. Uh, fire and spit. <sighs> That's a blast from the bellows. Won't fix the forge, but at least I can forget about my troubles for a while. Like what? Take your pick. We got bodies to bury from the bristlebacks, the work stoppage, Olvin grating the gears about his concession decree. Hey! Weapons off the table! Hmm. <laughs> ah. Don't listen to me. Nothing a cold brew and knocking some heads together can't fix eventually. So the bristlebacks and the daunt. <laughs> You're a pig. <laughs> Blasted things, those bristlebacks. They just showed up one day, rampaging around the valley like they exploded out of a forge. <sighs> Lost some good people. But bless the bellows, you cleared them out and got this place working again. That put a dent in Olvin's plans. Now, if only there was some way to smash them all together and run them out of town. But how could Bristlebacks and the Daunt help Olvind? Two words. Concession decree. Since no one knows where the Bristlebacks came from, Olvind has taken to blaming the Karja for him. He's hoping to dig up enough old resentments to get a strike going until the concession's signed. This is just his latest attempt. He's been trying to rile up the workers since the day he rolled into town. About that. I think the Bristlebacks came out of Olvind's old mine. <gasps> now there's a spark that could light a fire. Can you prove it? I'm working on it. By the forge. Grab my ear if you nail it down. I thought you'd be back in Freeheap. Well, after the big battle at Meridian, I went back. But realized it was running smooth. Didn't need me. Heard about the rebuilding out at Baron Light. Figured they could use another hammer. Been scraping by ever since. You could always leave. And go back east? Nah. I ain't one to leave a lit forge. Besides, someone's got to be a squeaky wheel for the workers around here. So about Olvind? Around here, everything's about Olvind. How'd he end up in charge? He got here early, like a squirrel smelling a fat nut. He knew rebuilding barren light would need stone and timber. So he jangled purses all over Mainspring, getting investors to front claims on anything in the Daunt that might be worth a damn. Thing is... All the bankers back home know that this is Karja land, and the Sun King can revoke those claims at any time. That's why he's desperate for the Magistrate to sign off on a concession decree. This concession decree, what is it exactly? And how would it help Olvind? It's pig diddle, that's what. A writ that would put all Osram claims in the Daunt under Osram law, even though they're on Karja land. It would mean that any existing ore, stone, and timber claims couldn't be revoked by the Karja. No more risk, no more hesitation for investors back in the claim to pour in the shards and expand their business. And since Olvind has a stake in all those claims, it would make him richer than a scrapper in a junk heap. Not to mention Chainscrape would become an Osram municipality, so he could buy enough votes to call himself an elder man. He's a sly old badger, I'll give him that. Figures if he keeps up the pressure, eventually the Magistrate will sign. Huh. Well, I, uh, I have to be going. Thanks for the drink, Petra. I'm glad I stopped by. Anytime, Flamehair. I love all this extra story stuff. It's really interesting. I feel like I'm learning more and more. What is this? I gotta see what this is. Ah. To revel in some strike, sister? Let me set the board. I was just passing by. I. Mmm, first timer, huh? Don't worry about it. I'll go easy on you. You got any pieces? Uh, no. Well, aren't you in luck then? I got an extra set. A Tanakh original straight out of the Forbidden West. 
That's it. Sit, sit, sit. I'll run you through it in a hot spark. I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards, too. Okay. Beginner's tutorial. All right, let's start off simple. The Tanakh like to say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Each piece represents a kind of machine, and each machine is worth a different number of victory points. And to win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine. Notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the distance they can strike from, and of course, their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. I'll explain the rest as we go. I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm, and move it forward. Okay. So he can move forward two spaces. He's got an attack of two. It's like chess, basically. I was never really good at chess, but... Fuck it. For now, we'll just move it forward two. And remember, each machine can only move a certain distance. Take a look at your notes if you need a reminder. Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round, so go ahead and pick a second machine. Move that machine forward. It's all part of the learning process. Gotta move that machine forward. What, it can only move forward? Just need to, uh... Just need to um, move that machine forward, Red. I'm trying to. Gotta move that machine forward. Move that machine forward. It's. What the fuck? Okay. What the hell? Just need to. Uh... Um, move that I'm, gonna machine. I'm gonna forfeit from now because I don't understand this. Indigate here? Okay. I'll be here if you change your mind. Yeah, we'll try that out later. That was a little irritating. Alright, I want to see if... Um... Uh... All right, yeah, that's the, uh, that's on hold still. Learning machine strike. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's keep going with the, the main quest for a bit. Talk to Vladis. Should we buy some Blaze? Or stock up? Of course it counts. And then whatever. I'm assuming we're, I'm gonna I'm just gonna assume that we're doing fine right now. Alright, Vladis. Wait a minute. What is this? 
actually, wait, there was there was one thing I wanted to do. I am so sorry. I'm not trying to drive y'all crazy. I want to go to the workbench and see if we can upgrade some stuff. Alright, come on. Alright. Weapon upgrades. Yeah, why not? Let's upgrade our outfit. Da oh, damn. That was all we could do. Whatever, I'll take that for now. Is there anything in our stash that we can get? Hold on, let me see real quick. Um, resources. Let's get this blaze. Alright, whatever. Okay, let's keep moving. The way to Baron Light is clear. Get moving. You're not Aaron Vanguardsman. I will move only when the captain when says... I cleared out all the bristlebacks, which I have. Captain's orders. So they're okay? Banged up, but breathing. And waiting up ahead for you. But... but I, I was supposed to have three escorts. I'm off to Baron Light, buddies. Like Aloy said, captain's orders. You can stay here. Abandoned to the riffraff? I think not. Guess you're coming with me then. See you there, Aloy. Well, now that that's done... The embassy can finally get underway. If I can get through it, I'll be able to track down silence. Hades. <sighs> Maybe even a Gaia backup. Guess I could head straight for Baron Light. Or poke around the daunt some more first. We got some uh, quests available. Let's check these out. Watch out, man! I'm sorry, I'll be right with you. Uh... Okay, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm saying it's overkill. It's a weapon! Kill is the point. Not if it blows the user's arm off! Oh, just, just, just stop talking! Where are we? Ah! <clears throat> so, uh... You, you look like someone who's always searching for a new weapon. Am I right? Actually, I... <laughs> But you're just not! I am with a customer! I... I'm not a customer. I got it! Triple the powder! It'll blow a strider sky high! Ba-boom! One shot kill, guaranteed. Uh... Maybe I am. Then you are in the right place at the right time, Red! How would you like to be the proud owner of the world's first machine-enhanced... Explosive, done-in-one, machine-wrecking... Yet perfectly safe... Javelin Thrower. Are you two from around here? Nah, the claim. Dad sent us out west in search of some unknown opportunity. Said we'll know it when we see it. Sounds like you had other ideas. Let's just say that opening another trading post for my parents isn't how I want to make my mark in this world. <sighs> I imagine traveling alone must be nice. So she's your partner? My apprentice. And my sister. She's why we're out here. There was an incident. Another incident. Involving explosives? Ba boom! And Dad's precious homebrew. He shipped us out the next day. Huh. Tell me more about this weapon of yours. I saw a scroll when I was a kid by some Karja scholar who wandered out west. Had a scary drawing of a Tanakh warrior hunting with a kind of javelin thrower. Effective? Yes. 
basic? Undoubtedly. But coming out here made me remember it. And I am on the brink of vastly improving the tool's archaic design. Whereas I will perfect it. I can use machine parts to enhance the user's throw, increase the projectile's velocity. Well, Boomer here is adamant that enhancing the projectile is better. Namely with explosive tips. Boomsticks. Why not both? That could work. There's one small snag. I need the parts to make the first working model. Well, for starters, I'll need charger horns. Intact. Yeah, that. Just be sure to shoot them off before the machine goes down. Otherwise, they break. But the real innovation, and keep it to yourself, is a fang horn rib. There's a mean one east of here. Blow it sky high. Boomer! You get them for me. It's yours. My treat. You have a deal. Okay. Let's do it. Wait, no. I don't want to do machine strike. Not right now. I am going to pass on that. Ah! I could get around faster if I find a charger to override. I can override one of these chargers. I have to go on quiet, so I don't spook the herd. Charger horns for going here now. Just need a rib from that fang horn. He's done. Alright, where is this fang horn at? Have we tried getting up there? Oh, yeah, we can't go up there. Let's gather some more skybrush. Alright, are there any chargers up here that we can override? I think we scared them all off.
Rumor said that Fanghorn should be nearby. Gonna have to take it down to get its rip. Looks like the Everything I need for Dell and Boomer. Now, oh, let's see about that weapon of theirs. Oh my god, man! Oh no. Okay, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck this. I'm just gonna fast travel up there. Maybe it's not worth it. <laughs> Alright, I got it. I know that look. You've got all the parts, haven't you? Here you go. Outstanding! I only need a few minutes to finish the prototype. I'll take the version that won't blow my arms off. Thanks. Hi. So did you blow up any machines to get the parts? Or any bandits? You really like explosions, huh? Here we go. With the boomsticks? Oh, you betcha. Um, is it safe? Probably. Can I have one? No! Ah. Oh. Cause we're gonna make you something even better. Ba boom Ha! <laughs> Spike thrower launcher launch pro uh, powerful projectiles that can hit enemies at long range. Due to their long buildup, they have a slow rate of fire and cannot be used while jumping or crouching. So, do we level up at all from that? We got a skill point. Yeah, we reached level eight. Nice. All right, what's this quest? Is it the fucking machine strike quest? Because I'm not interested. There's this really like weird like blur thing that happens when you're running really fast and you're trying to focus on like the waypoints. It kind of like distorts a bit. I don't know if you guys have noticed it. I mean, it's not game breaking or anything, but it is definitely noticeable. Hey, that's not game, but any tribe can enjoy it. Aloy, back for more, huh? Another round here? Heard you've been busy. As for me. I'm gonna need a few more of these before I get back to the forge. Is there something on your mind? Well, things aren't as bad since you got this place running again. 
But we still got Olven grading the gears about his concession decree. If you don't put that down, I'll come over there and show you how that game ends. Anyway, right now, I'm just worried about those refugees out from Sunfall. To come all this way, enduring Forge knows what. And I saw. They won't let anyone up the old trailhead southwest of here. And therein lies the problem. A stormbird crashed up on the cliffs last week, and Talon Cleanbrokers had his eye on the salvage ever since. But the refugees have barred entrance. Mustn't interrupt their sun-scorched ritual. Something about finding a twilight path. Huh. Never heard them talk about that before. Yeah, well, these particular Shadow Karja are an odd bunch. But overall, they're peaceful folk. Not that it matters to Talon. He'll crack some heads to get to that salvage. Maybe you could swing by, convince him to set up camp somewhere else? What else can you tell me about the Shadow Carger refugees? Well, they don't call themselves Shadow Carger for one. At least, not anymore. They're some other brand of sun crazed. But whatever side of the sun they're on, they're peaceful through and through. Don't seem to want for nothing except a place to live, pray, and just enough food to keep from starving. So they're just camped outside by a trail, blocking entry to a wrecked stormbird, waiting for... what, exactly? Don't rightly know, but I'll tell you this. Should they ever wise up and salvage it, a stormbird heart is worth a lot. And if they get there first, then by Ostrom Law, it's theirs. Not that Tolan Cleanbrokers ever lost sleep over any law-breaking. Who is this Tolland Cleanbroker? Just some chuff-huffing pawnsman. Got a shop here in town. Lived in chain scrape since there was a chain scrape. He and Alvin go back a ways. Like a pair of coals in a campfire, those two. So Tolland works for Alvin? Ha! <laughs> Alvin might think so. But Tolland scrapes up his own scams. And he ain't the type to let a few refugees get between him and Stormbird Salvage. Well, if I'm up that way, I'll talk to the refugees. Try to convince them to move. Much appreciated. They have it rough. Don't need Talon making it rougher. Petra said Talon has a shop here in Chainscrape. I could have a word with him first. I found some berries I never seen before. Alright, let's go talk to him. Talon. Tom Holland. I'm just kidding now. Come on, y'all saw that one coming. you. The machine hunter that bailed out the Karja. Never heard it put that way before. What do you want? Heard you've been hassling refugees up by the cliffs. Yeah, well you heard wrong. There's salvage up there. A stormbird. Nailed it myself with the harpoon here in town. Not an easy shot if I do say so myself. It clipped its wing. And it crashed into the old tower up there. Killed it quick. Yeah, so if anyone's hassling anyone, it's the Shadow Karja filth that's blocking the way up to my claim. And you're ready to crack some skulls to get to it? No need. It's a raggedy bunch. Probably all starved before I have to lift a finger. We'll see about that. Oh yeah, we will, won't we? Now shop's closed to Karja lovers. On your blasted way. Okay. Let's do this.